our next guest has been on the platform before. She's been a Free Speech Friday um, columnist. She is a, a writer, and I think she'd describe herself a, as a feminist, uh, long-time writer and long-form writer in, in the New Zealand media. And a piece she wrote in on a site called Plain Sight, um, which is really quite interesting, uh, an article called Face Off. And in it, Yvonne Van Dongen addresses an issue which is causing a bit of heat at the moment, and that is the idea that it's somehow cool or appropriate for drag queens, that is men who dress up as women in a hypersexualized way, to read stories to kids in public libraries. It is a global trend. Um, and rather than being about the kids, it would seem to me this trend is about creating diversity and all the rainbow mumbo jumbo that is going around at the moment. And Yvonne has written a piece that I'm not going to read in full here today because I've got her on to talk about it, that I just thoroughly recommend to you because it takes this issue and it puts it in context and I think it asks some difficult questions. So let's get into it. Yvonne Van Dongen joins us now. Happy International Women's Day, Yvonne. Yeah, good morning, Sean. Lovely to be here, especially on International Women's Day. All right. And look, um, I, yep. No, keep going. Sorry. Well, no, no. Look, it's Women's Day. I'm going to give you a fair crack. What, what were you going to say? I was going to say that often when on women, International Women's Day, the media talks about things like the gender pay gap or the number of women on boards, and now they're starting to talk about um, menstruation and menopause, all these things that they think is, it's really great that we've been silenced about. But I think about things like the things women are not allowed to say at all. Like I think about the billboard that had the opposite defin definition of women, uh, adult, human, female, and I think that had to be taken down. That was deemed offensive. And then I see billboards advertising drag shows on television, mainstream entertainment, and that's okay. And only one of those is misogynistic. And I wonder what on earth we're doing. Uh, mm. You know, what on earth? Where are we now? Yeah. And I find it very Yvonne, because what you've done is you've delineated da drag queens. A and look, I, the death of, of Georgina Byer, who I knew and I would have considered a friend and a person I liked very much, in the context yep. of the debate that's been going about drag queens, it maybe kind of stopped me in my tracks, right? Yep. And I yep. Thought, yeah, look, I interviewed Georgina for a story, I can't remember whether it was free speech or trans, and I found her r utterly refreshing. Yeah. Really yeah. direct and honest and down to earth. And she too was critical of some of the gender bullies out there. And I think it had put her offside with the members of her LGB and alphabet community. I really admired her, her courage. She was brave. Yeah. So, really brave. but here's the delineation that your excellent column face off makes and that is you meet Georgina Byer and Georgina Byer for whatever reason has decided that that is herself and that's what she's going to be and it's totally genuine right yep it's yep, totally it genuine yep it is R right it is. Yep, but yep. a drag queen isn't a drag queen is a kind of hyperbolic as you said in your piece kind of sat satirical take on what it is to be a woman Yes, it's all the worst aspects of what men think of as women. It's it's like a hooker on steroids. It's the big eyelashes, it's the big hair, the huge breasts, the skimpy outfits, the lewd behaviour. It's it's nothing like any woman I know. And it's it's lampooning women. It's a caricature. And as I say in the article, if that... I mean, that's the same as blackface. I call it woman face. Yeah, and I the, well, I, I was going to build face. up to it, but you've made this amazing yeah. comparison. And I, I, I yeah. think I'm old enough to remember the, the black and white minstrel show and people dressing yep. up with, like, boot tan on and, and big lips and going, whoa, mummy. And, yeah. and they yeah. were lampooning um, yep. largely African-Americans, um, but yep. black people were lampooned through blackface, and that yep. is now... I mean, Trudeau's done it, but anyone who's done black flays, they have to, like, they yep. have to self-flagellate and, and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, because it's regarded right. as completely politically incorrect, right? Yep, it is. That's right. A and fair enough. But if you mock women, it's actually, it's great. It's hilarious. It's funny. It's family entertainment. It's on television. And now it's in libraries. And actually, I don't think it is great. And I don't know why people aren't saying 
this is offensive. This is offensive. To your mind yeah. then, are drag queens as offensive yeah. to women or should be as offensive to women as blackface yeah. is to people of colour? Yes, absolutely. Whoa. Absolutely. Yes, but I think once you see it, you can't unsee it. That's what I suddenly realised. I mean, I used to, I once thought the black and white misinstrals were entertaining. I've been to drag shows and thought it was fun. But once you see what's really happening, then you think, hang on, why is this acceptable? And then quite often the jokes, when you, if you've gone to some drag shows, there's often quite jokes about women. And, and I think I say in that article that I was, you know, prompted to write about it because I watched an episode of that RuPaul drag show and one of the contestants made some really offensive remarks about women's vaginas that I cannot believe didn't, I mean, I don't know why that didn't result in him having to do the most awful mea culpas in the world, but that's okay. Abusing women, mocking women, you know, caricaturing women. But this women, is absolutely oh. permeated mainstream yep. media in this country, television New Zealand, yep. uh, yeah. TV3, Radio New Zealand, it's all about diversity, Yvonne. Why can't you get with the program? <laughs> what, diversity when you mock women? That's okay. That's not diversity. That's erasing women. That, that's not doing women any favours. I mean, women like me have been trying to get away from those stereotypes. We don't want to be associated with that. No woman I know dresses like that. Mm. They're busy working, juggling jobs, family, you know, responsibilities. Getting, Just like men. Picking the kids up. Just like men, yeah. And it's not, it's not glamorous, it's not fun, it's not sexy. And this isn't a fun, sexy entertainment. It really isn't. And it concerns me that now it's in libraries, not that I addressed it in the article, but that's why I was asked to write it by a member of the Free Speech Union because they've taken the view that, it, that it's a, uh, people trying to shut it down. It's an issue of free speech, and I don't see it as an issue of free speech. I don't think it's appropriate for children. Yeah. I mean, adults... Well, cross-dressing cross and, and female yeah. impersonation in that context is actually defined as a fetish, and I don't yes. know that I uh, want yes. children exposed to fetishists. Yes, yes. Yeah. The more I've read about it, I realise it's actually part of probably gay male culture. It's a gay male fetish. And why do we want children to see that? Why... Do we want to undermine their instinctive boundaries? Uh, I don't know why that we would think that that was okay. We want to be hip or liked or, I don't know, we want, uh, maybe we want to break down all the boundaries. I don't know. Boundaries are quite think, good. Um, I quite like boundaries. Boundaries are good. Yeah, me too. And it's fine. I know people parent in a million different ways and parents can take their children to a private drag show, but I don't think it's appropriate. Well, I have to say my mother did library. when I was a kid. Did she? Yeah, I, I met Carmen when I was very, very young a couple of times at one of her nightclubs in Wellington because mum was somewhat bohemian. Um, well, there goes my argument completely. Well, no, 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 no but I'm not saying did it do me any harm, not particularly. I did wonder yeah. about, because we got free Fanta and Coke while we were sitting there at that funny little round table, and I always wondered why the lady with the big hair said, had such a deep voice. Right, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wouldn't right. expect... It is part of a trend we've had that everything has to be rainbow and everything has to be yeah. diverse, and, you know, that's why we can't have nice stuff anymore, isn't it, Vaughan? Yeah, yeah, it is. And mm. if people can take their kids to Pride Parade, a lot of it I just think is inappropriate as well. They can do all that, but do do people have to... Does the public taxpayer have to pay for it in public libraries? Is, you know, is that... Acceptable, really? I, yeah. What's interesting is when I looked at the um, free speech page on that, because they explained why they'd supported their right to speak, that most of the comments were against, and I was quite heartened to see that. I think New Zealanders are more sensible than we think, yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, really Here do. Come, There's like yeah. over 900 comments, yeah. over 900, most of whom are against. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but if I'm, you know, mainstream media aren't going to listen to the people because they have got an agenda. No, that's right. I, I do want to, I, I want to throw at you some of the comebacks from the Liberals, yeah. from the woke that, that they get. Uh, they just show a picture of Dame Edna Edward, uh, Everidge, that, you know, the Barry Humphreys creation. Yeah. I like Dame Edna Everidge because it's an actual character. She's not sexualized. She's grumpy and acerbic and she's a real character. I do not find that offensive. Just as Ken and Ken are not offensive, they're characters. It's not a caricature. 
I mean, the drag acts or the one, a woman face are all the same. They're all versions and they're all shrieking and bitching and tottering around on their high heels and thinking they're really funny with their sort of double entendres and rude jokes. And they're, I mean, they're a gigantic bore as far as I'm concerned mm. and not appropriate entertainment for children mm. and it's misogynistic to the core. To Whoa. the core. To the core. You say drag yeah. queens are misogynistic yeah. in that context or just per uh, se? Uh, just per se. I mean, there's a million ways you can dress up and camp it up. I mean, look at World of Wearable Art. You can dress up as a peacock. You can do a mit uh, lots of things. You do not have to satirise women. You do not have to mock women. Mm. It's not necessary. What would you say to all these diversity executives at councils and government departments um, who are into this and look at you and say, you're, you're going to get labelled a turf. You do know that too. Yeah, well, we know that it means, you know, tediously explaining reality to efforts. So, yeah, I am. I, I believe in reality. I do. I don't believe in gender woo, and I believe in reality. So I don't care what they say to me. I don't care about the names that I'm called. It's really, I don't think it's a very strong argument. I find it interesting, though, that the Free Speech Union has supported it, and I did ask them Yeah, the they, they've made some, the some weird calls lately because I think they are by their age, if you look at who they are by their age, they're kind of infected with woke on some issues. I love them. I love well, their work. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think they're heroes in lots of ways, but I did ask Jonathan, would he defend blackface, you know, a show, a blackface show? And he said, well, he wrote to me and said, yes, he would if called upon. And I thought, oh, boy, Ooh. I hope you're never called upon because Bring I think backs. that would be the... We're going to have a black and white minstrel show. Look, it's funny today, uh, yeah. too. I... I, I with somewhat, with satirical intent, um, and I once was going to do this on, for a previous employer and they pulled the plug in the last two minutes and that was I was going to identify as a woman today for International oh, Women's right. Day. I was going to be right. Siobhan or Shona Plunkett. Why? Yeah. Because I could. And, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I and took you a you change your birth certificate. I, you every, can change your birth certificate today. Yeah. And then you can change it back tomorrow. That's if right. You're allowed to do that. And I wouldn't yeah. bother doing that. I'd just identify as what I was in the woke world. I, I ran a Twitter right. poll, incredibly scientific, and asking people, should I do this? Yes, no, or don't be so silly. Yes was 45%. Oh, okay. No, I think was about um, 15%, and the rest of it was don't be so silly. So I haven't done it today because Good. Good. Um, I was following the Paul. public. Well, what do you mean, good call? Why couldn't I be a woman today so I could identify oh. with the movement on Women's Day? Yvonne? Oh, because <laughs> you're not an idiot, Sean. You're not an idiot and you believe in reality as well. But you could just take the piss. That's fine. All right. Well, you wouldn't be doing it seriously. Yeah. I have to yeah. ask you, Yvonne, you've interviewed me and I think you did a great piece for North and South that got yeah. buggered with by some woke sub-editors. Yeah. Um, and they had to issue a correction uh, not on what you'd yep. written, but what on someone had put in. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, the conversations I had with you there, I felt an, awa an awakening in you about just how deep all this craziness has gone, particularly into our media. Yeah. What's happened since yeah, yeah, then? Yeah. And, and have you been painted and pushed out of the mainstream because you know how the world I works? I don't know. I mean, it, it could be age, but I cannot get stories that I think are really good stories in the mainstream media, and I am a fan of the mainstream media because I'm actually one of the hoi polloi myself, so yeah. I like to get stories out there. And so, I mean, the story's going begging. That makes, it makes me want to, you know, my eyeballs bleed. But I've talked to some of the people who are honest on, public, on online platforms and things, and they say that the pushback is just so um, vehement that it takes up quite a lot of energy, to yeah. which I say just ignore it. But, you know, so I can, there are so many stories out there about that do concern women and concern parents too. Parents yeah. are really worried about what their children are being taught about gender identity in schools. There are civil servants that talk to me about they're worried about what this whole gender ideology permeating, you know, the civil service that they're bound to follow. It's kind of like a revolution by stealth has happened. It's not based on evidence. It's gender woo, so it's an ideology. And it, it can't be discussed. It can't be discussed in any mainstream area. And I'm just was kind of writing a story, which I might send to you, Sean. Oh, no, look, we'll, we'll, we, we'll publish it. We'll publish it? Yeah. Well, it's actually a news story. It's just about how we in New Zealand have housed a 
violent male prison in the women's prison. Prisoner. A man is stabbed. A man is stabbed a woman and two men. And the, when I say stabbed a woman, he sliced her face and lacerated her body. It was horrible. Yeah. It wasn't, you know. And um, he transitioned to become a woman during the court case uh, called Pandora Electra and was placed in, he got nine years, three months, so it wasn't nothing, and was placed in Auckland Women's Prison and his council said he felt safer. Now, to me, that's a story. It got people into trouble. In Did he go through actual physical prison. transition, even though you can't really? It's just getting your bits chopped um, off. I, well, he just seemed to have a ponytail and a fringe. It didn't, I mean, oh, God, I don't, so I mean, really getting job. your bits chopped off. Yeah, I'd say yeah. it's a con job. I'd say it's a con job. So, and I think why, so I looked up the law, and the law is that um, unless they've been uh, convicted of a sexual violence, they can be housed in the transgender prison, can be housed in the women's prison. But so violence generally, violence against women, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I thought, yes, he probably does feel safer, but I wonder how the women feel about it. But of course, they don't have a voice either. So in lots of areas, women do not have a voice. We cannot air these concerns. And not just women, actually. I think there's a lot of men who are also concerned about this ideology. Yeah. Um, and they can't speak out. And there's no media running the stories. So, mm. yeah, it's, that concerns me. That well, concern there, is, me. there is some media, Yvonne. That's why you're on here this morning. Look, you said to me when I rang you yesterday, because I read that piece and it just was so striking. Yeah. Uh, you said, I'm, I'm lousy on the radio. We've just, I, oh, I think we've just got a week's worth of promos from all the stuff you've said. Uh, Oh, because you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been honest and you've been strong, and you know you've been a woman. Um, I think yeah, and I'll be in trouble, but yeah, no, right, you won't. No, you won't. You'll oh, be yeah. alive. Hey, I thank you oh, so yeah, much, right. so much for joining yeah, us this morning. My I'm trying my to get pleasure. clearance from Dane on. to publish the Face Off uh, article on the platform uh, opinions uh, site as well, and we'll of course oh, have this interview oh, up. Oh, Yvonne. How did you how did you find it? I thought, because it's a brand oh, new blog. I have my algorithms. I have my algorithms, Yvonne. I, I never sleep in searching for interesting <laughs> content and the voice of That's reason great. in a world of madness. Thank you so much and happy <laughs> International Women's Day to you. That is uh, Yvonne Van Dongen, uh, writer, boy. Her description, um, uh, her description of a turf tirelessly explain, explaining reason to efforts, I think it was. That was great. That was awesome. Um, wow. Uh, apparently the latest edition, someone's just texted into LGBTQIA and gang uh, maps, minor attracted people. We used to call them paedophiles or perverts. Um, what an interesting thing. So I'm going to ask this question. I want you to text in and we're going to talk about this later in the morning. If blackface is so offensive, why isn't drag queening equally as offensive? If blackface is offensive on grounds of race or ethnicity, why isn't drag queening offensive on grounds of gender? I think it's a very interesting question for many public libraries around the country. And you want to dress up, blokes want to dress up as hypersexualized sheilas and prance around on stage and people play them money, knock yourself out. But there are standards, aren't there?